Mori Tala remains somebody that his footprint will be difficult to wipe away, you know, in this country. Suppose that that man is alive, or suppose that they allow him to rule that time, would have been enjoying by now. But they don't allow him to rule. Who, oh, sir? You know that he was assassinated. Mohammed was Nigeria's former head of state and he ruled between 1975 and 1976. He was one of the youngest head of state Nigeria has ever had. But one day on his way to the office, he was assassinated right here on the spot. Motala Mohammed was born on the 8th of November 1938 in the Kuara quarters of Kano State to Rizkwa Mohammed and Wani Ramatu. He had seven siblings, one girl and seven boys, and he was the second child. Motala's father was schooled and literate. He was trained as a veterinary inspector and served the Kano State government in the hides and skin department, but later on left to start his own cattle rearing enterprise. I would say I knew him, but I heard about him. So I knew him for, as I was told, he's a man of his word. From what I heard them say then, they believe he's the one that's supposed to have transformed Nigeria. Had he been his alive now? A man, though a military man, who practiced his profession with a difference. Oh. It was, yeah. It was, I want to see, I want to call him a crusader of anti-corruption. Because when he became the head of state, I think July 29, 1975, though he spent few months and he was, you know, hacked down at this spot we are standing. It's somebody whose effect was felt immediately. Though I was much younger, but we had and we saw most of the things he was doing. He brought a lot of reforms, even in the health sector. Mutala Muhammad attended Sikin Gida Primary School, Gidan Makama Primary School, and Barewa College, Zaria, formerly Government College. On the 26th of January, 1952, he was admitted as student number 941 at Barewa College. He was one of the 10 students from Kano and he finished in 1957. One of his classmates was the late General Mohammed Shua, shot dead at his home by a gunman in Meduguri in November 2012. Shua was one of the prominent figures during the Nigerian Civil War and later a leading figure in Mutala's government. Gowan also attended the same college. Mutala also attended the regular officer special training school, Roast, Tessia, Ghana, now Ghana Military Academy, where he was taught as a second lieutenant, infantry tactics and military laws by the late Odumegu Ojuku in 1958. Obasanjo and Gowan also attended Roast, Cadets from all over West Africa then attended Roast for six months, military training before proceeding to Sandhurst for course completion and commissioning. Well, Mohammed is uh, one of the heroes in Nigeria that uh, died uh, around uh, that uh, 1963 or, if I'm not mistaken, you understand? And he's uh, one of the Nigeria heroes that died, and uh, we are even feeling his death the way 
uh, about his death. We feel about it. Suppose that that man is alive, or suppose that they allow him to rule that time, would have been joined by now. Why did you say that? No, he, the man came out to rule, you understand, to govern. He has the potential, he has what it takes to rule. Not all this kind of what we are seeing now. Those are God-fearing people then, not now. You understand? Okay, you said God-fearing. Yes, yeah, he has God-fearing. God what do I mean by God-fearing? That means he had carried people for mind. You understand what I'm saying now? That somebody that carries people along, you know, to know the mind of people, what people want. He knows what people want and he wanted to do it for them. Motola got married to his Yoruba wife, who is partly Fulani roots, Mrs. Afsat Ajoke Mohamed, in 1961, while she was studying at the School of Dental Hygiene in Lagos. Then, he was a second lieutenant in the Nigerian army and they had six children together. Today, Mrs. Ajoke Mohamed is aging gracefully. She is widely respected for her charitable activities and her calmness. Even as a first lady, she was not necessarily flamboyant. Mutala was the general officer commanding of the Nigerian Army 2nd Division of the Nigerian Civil War that happened between 1967 and 1970. Mutala commanded his division with the ruthlessness and determination and he had some spectacular victories and some unforgettably stinging defeats in the hands of the Biafran soldiers. 100% better, 100% better than what we are having now, than what we are seeing now. We are, we are now in a lawless country, we are, everybody just behaving anyhow. Look at starvation everywhere, hungry everywhere. Look at uh, family scattering every so In short, we are not, I can say we are not in a government, uh, I can say we don't have government. Based on what they say he did, the little he did before he, he died, I think from the steps he took to address things i think to that extent, i believe that adibin is alive now he might have transformed nigeria he was made head of state on july 30 1975. during his tenure he moved the federal capital territory from lagos to abuja in regards to overpopulation he created seven states of Nigerian on 3rd of February, which includes Bauchi, Benue, Bono, Imo, Ogun, Ondo, and Nanja, bringing it to a total of 19 states in 1976. Just a little over six months, Mutala's time was full of events. Upon assuming power, Motala made it clear that he would take no nonsense. He was very decisive with issues, he wasted no time, and because of this and many more, he became the darling of millions of Nigerians. His countrymen and women were immensely happy with him and were satisfied that at last, Nigeria now had a strong, decisive, an uncompromising leader, the one with the discipline and tenacity to take them to the promised land. His tenure was short, to be precise, and um, things were still better. At least there's food, the country is still in good shape as of his own time. So there isn't much to discuss about him. You know, I know him as a one-time uh, head of state. Of all the presidents, uh, the head of states we have had in Nigeria, the leaders, I think um, he is much remembered for good than for bad. I know he was involved in the creation of states, you know, at a time, you know, he created some uh, more states for the country. Motala was known to be a blunt, 
outspoken and a risk taker. He was in a class of his own when it came to dangerous exploits. Got a lot of reforms, even in the health sector, where my my late um, governor of Kwara State. Then we went. I am from Kogi State. Then we were under Kwara State. The late governor Ibrahim Taiwo would disguise as a patient and went to the hospital, general hospital, to kill and see the way people will just be maneuvering. It's a matter of who you know. And before you know what is happening, because we're not just in this military uh, costume, so you have to sack everybody, bring about sanity, and so on and so forth. So Murita Tala remains somebody that his footprint will be difficult to wipe away you know, in this country. Murtala's life was cut short at the tender age of 37 by groupies led by Bukasuka Dimka in Lagos on February 13, 1976, after his car was attacked and he was gunned down on his way to his office along Federal Secretariat Road in Lagos. I think he was killed around Abalende here. Abalende. I think uh, when was uh, I think he has he went to pray. Where exactly in mm. mm. I can't really specify exactly, yeah. but I know it's Navalende. Okay, look behind you there. <laughs> that's the statue, that's the place, the spot where he was killed. And that's the statue. Burit Allah Mohammed, because of that drastic reform he was carrying out, even within the military. That is one of the reasons why he was cut short. His death was also very painful, you know. You know, he, he, he was killed. As, I think it was like a, a, a betrayer. Mm. He was, I think that's the much I can say about him. A statue was mounted at the spot where he was killed. And some of the things on the statue signify his post as a military man. It has two guns and the ranks he received when he was alive. How can you compare his tenor to the one we have now? We can't. We can't. Why? Because we're larger in size now than of his time. And the country is not as civilized as it is now. We have so many things like the phone, email, all. So it wasn't like that in his own days. So you're saying Nigeria is better now than... Nigeria is better now than his time, but more difficult. How do you mean? It's more difficult to live. Life is now very expensive. To me, it's not comparable. Reason being that he came in as a military head of state. A military regime is being referred to as a dictatorial regime where you get things done, you know, via instruction. But under the dis democratic dispensation, the president needs to go through the second, the, you know, the three arms of government before he can have his way most of the time. And that is why people who believe that it should be business as usual are now teaming up against the present administration, making life difficult for him. So that what he ought to achieve within maybe six months, by the time he's not re receiving response from the National Assembly, you realize that it will be delayed. And if care is not taken, you just forget about such. He was succeeded by the Chief of Staff, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. To keep his legacy, his face was featured on the 20 Naira note and also Mutala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos is named in his honor. Box.